Water? Check. Snacks? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Charger? Check. TCG? Check. 3DS? And check. Let's go. We all live in a Pokemon world. Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coats on back order, bringing you another thrilling installment of our Pokemon Go adventures here in my hometown. Today's episode, I'm going to focus on seeing if I can get some background noise blocked out like that loud truck. Again, this is more testing. I'm quite happy with how the sound recorder worked in the last one. There was a part where I said something about there was a loud car in the background, and I couldn't even hear it during the editing, so I was quite happy with that. But today's focus is going to be evolutions. I've got a lot of Pokemon. First of all, you'll see I've got 290 Pokemon out of a 300 storage space right now. I've got to clear out the uh, Pokemon a little bit. As I usually do, I've been saving up things like Caterpie, Weedle, Pidgey for like mass evolution because I have a couple lucky eggs left over from hitting level 30. But I have a lot of new possible species to evolve as well. For example, we've got Russo, who's going to evolve to Blossom in this episode. And I'm not going to spoil all of them. There's a good number of Pokemon that are going to be evolving up towards the end of the video. But before I do any evolutions, I'm going to wait till the evening because I'm currently walking with one of two Eevee. I have one Eevee already walked to 10 kilometers, and I'm walking this other one, currently at 4.4. I'm hoping to get both of them to 10 kilometers. From what I understand, even if you don't do the nickname trick for Espeon or Umbreon, you can still randomly evolve them into those forms. I wonder how that sounds on the audio. But you can randomly evolve them into Espeon or Umbreon if you've walked them 10 kilometers, and if it's a certain time of day. So I'm gonna test that. I did try it before. I think both Eevee had evolved into Vaporeon and Flareon, if I recall correctly. But a friend of mine says he did get an Umbreon evolved up with uh, not using the nickname trick. So I think it is possible. Anyway, another Pokemon I'm working on is, let's show you here in the listing, if I can scroll down. It's going to be a Kabuto. There he is right there. So I mentioned in the last video, Chikorita were nesting in the King Square Park uptown. Yep, I'm going back uptown again. Same place you've already seen, but we're going to see some new things and look at some more of the uh, sculptures, more of the landmarks this time. But there are Kabuto nesting in King Square. So I have 37 candies right now. If I can find just two more using pinup berries on each one, I can evolve Kabuto and Kabutops in this episode too, and I'll just need Aerodactyl for all the fossil Pokemon thus far. So that's going to be the mission for today. Let's get things started right now. We're going to catch that bus that's coming down in any moment and hit the uptown area. I'm not sure what I'll show off first, but I might show off some of the landmarks. I think I'm going to try to hit up the park first and see if I can find some Kabuto, though. So let's see what happens. So I've now touched down in the uptown area. It's uh, a little bit drizzly. You can't tell on the uh, screen, of course, but I'm seeing some drops on my phone. So I should have thought to bring my umbrella, but then could I even use that with uh, both hands being used for the phones? I don't know. Anyway, I forgot to mention a few things. I'm also working on a couple of eggs. I've got a 10-kilometer one, which is the final use I have left of the three incubators I got for hitting level 30. So we're going to see what comes out of that level, or sorry, that 10-kilometer egg. I also got a level 5 I'm working on. There's a level 2 waiting to, or I keep saying level. There's a two kilometer waiting to be put in there. And it's also day seven of my seven day streak today. So I'm here outside. If you can see there, the Imperial Theater. It's not a very good angle to show you. But this is where I met Weird Al Yankovic backstage once. Very cool stuff. Big time, right? All right, so we're going to hit this up for the Poke Stop. Seventh stop in a row. Look at all the stuff we're getting. Revise, berries, King's Rock, potions, all this goodness. Look at how many items. I love the seven day thing they put that in. That's a very cool feature they've added. Now, you couldn't see it because it just disappeared, but a Kabuto did appear in the middle of the park. At first when I checked the nearby, it wasn't anywhere near there, but it is there now. So as we try to get through some loud traffic, I'm gonna pop back in. And you know what? We'll wait a moment. I can talk about a little bit more stuff, I suppose. Let's see what the gyms are like. Because I do have to hit my gym for my 10 coins for the day. There's a simple level 3 gym, two Pokemon at the city market. That's easy to take over. You know, for a while, oh, it's got that Blissey in there. Is that the same one I beat last time? Same trainer. Very well could be. I think I can cross now. No, nope, better be safe. Traffic is still kind of tied up. There's some construction going on in this part of the city, so it slows things down a bit. And to wait for my chance to get across. Now, of course, you want to be safe. Make sure you're looking both ways. I'm probably not a good example holding two phones, but... 
I think I can make it. Let's go. All right, we are good. Someone else was crossing, so I kind of piggybacked on that. But as I said, there should be a Kabuto appearing somewhere in the middle of the park. That's going to be our first catch of the day. Right over that way. I could get that centric right beside me, but let's get the Pokemon we're actually hunting for today. So we're going to go over this area here. I think we're close enough. We're standing on the center, but we're going for the Kabuto. Let's use that good old Pinat Berry. Get six candies plus one extra when I do transfer it. Assuming I make the catch. All right, come on, first catch of the day. Let's see how much Stardust I get for this as well. First ball, perfect way to start this day off. Seven day streak. We're getting six candy, of course. 300, nope, 3,100 Stardust for that. And I've got 43 candy. Let's just check the appraisal. I don't think it's gonna be all that good. Pretty decent. I forget what my current one is, but I have chosen one when I had five of them. Chosen one to be my main Kabuto. So we're gonna just send you away for one extra candy, giving us, how many is that now? Just one more capture, we'll have enough Kabuto candy for evolution later tonight. But for right now, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a run around. Oh, City Market's already under attack. I'm gonna do a run around, grab items, look for Pokemon. If anything amazing pops up, I'll pop back in and show you that. Otherwise, I'll check back in when we get down to the uh, Poke Stops with some of the cool sculptures here in St. John, New Brunswick. So as we're closing in on City Market, it is still under attack. Whoever is attacking did get the gym down to just that Blissey remaining. But they seem to be having trouble taking it out, so should I jump in and help out? I think I might just do that. I've taken Blissey down before. And here I see my friend Steve. Hey Steve, how's it going? Good, Chaz. How are you? Not too bad. Do you want to pop in a Pokemon Go video? I'm recording for today. We're going to see if I can take down this gym. Uh, what? Just working on that, so. Oh, yeah? So, you want to double team against it there? Sure. Alright, I'm jumping in. Jump in when you get a chance. How do you find fighting Blissey? Are they kind of difficult or? Difficult. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like I say, I find what's good is let them hit you with the regular hit because it charges your charge hit quicker. Okay. And if they're going to go for their like hyper beam or something, dodge that, of course, but every hit they hit you with is going to power yourself up for your charge hit even faster. With Blissey, as I said in the last video, it's the time limit that gets you, really, right? It is, yeah. They can't, uh, here comes a hyper beam, dodge it. Come on, rock steady. Yeah. So what team are you on? I am, uh, I am Instinct Yellow. Good stuff. We're going to both put Pokemon in the gym. I always like meeting fellow Instincts out and about. And people are getting a live footage video of beating this gym up nicely. Uh-oh. Hyper Beam again. Even if my Rock type takes that Hyper Beam, though, he's got, you know, resistance to it there, so... Not too worried about it. Which Pokemon are you working with there? Oh, Gyarados, I see. We got her. Awesome. And with that, we claim the city market for Team Instinct. Excellent. We'll, we'll keep it for like maybe five minutes at most or so. I'll put some more likes in there. I'll, that goes. I'll drop Rock Spin the Ursa Ring. And what I do immediately, of course, is get my coins right away because I can't usually keep gyms for very long. No, I do the same. Well, glad I could help out at the end of it there. Let's see your Snorlax, a massive... 2211, better than my Ruxpin at least. Nice. Good stuff. Thanks, Steve. All right, good seeing you, so you get to work. All right, see you later. Have a good day. So I am such a professional that after we took over the gym, I was like, hey, two more Kabuto appeared up in the park. So I went up there, seemingly filming the entire adventure, getting the last candy I needed to, as you'll see, evolve Kabuto later on tonight, if I can scroll to the proper part of the screen here. Where are you at, buddy? You're in my favorites. There you are. I do now have 51 Kabuto candy. Later tonight, when I do the massive evolution, I can evolve into Kabutops. Turns out I wasn't recording the screen. Whoops. Anyways, you didn't get to see the capture, but it has been done. Now we're here at the first stop I want to take a little look at is, they call it the people statues, or the crowd of statues. Sometimes in Pokemon Go, if you tap the little arrow by the name, you can get some more information, but just a simple image of the crowd of statues. It's usually the first stop I make every day because this is where the bus gets off uptown at, or one of the many stops, of course. Today, we already got our seven day streak, so we didn't get too many here, but I want to take some time. Let's take a look at these statues because I've always shown them in the background, maybe. You can see them in behind my head, but since I now have the proper audio recorder, I can get decent audio of myself as I show off these statues right here. There's a little informational, what would you call it, like a little display sign there. 
I'll take a look at that as well and explain exactly what these are all about. Now it's kind of interesting, I've heard many people say in the past that each one of these statues purposefully has something wrong with them. There's some sort of incorrect something or other. Now, honestly, I've taken a look at these statues a lot. I really can't see anything wrong other than maybe um, that's a face that only a mother could love, don't you think? But anyways, there is one thing I can point out. Going behind one of the male statues here. What is this? He's got his fingers crossed. That itself isn't all that unusual, right? However, when we scroll back to the front, he's got two hands up here. One hand holding the pinwheel, one hand at his side. Why does he have a third hand? It's kind of messed up. But anyways, this man over here is reading the newspaper from 1976. Now, I wonder if this is when it was made. I'll find out on the informational display over there, but carved by John Hooper, on the site next to Marsh Creek, ships were built by woodworkers and other craftsmen of St. John. Back when ships were only made of, were they only made of wood? I don't know. I might not be talking about anything I know what I'm saying. But as I say, we're going to scroll over and take a look at the informational sign here and see what exactly these are all about. Where are they at? Here we go. So, public art. Uh, number five, they're John Hooper. That is, I can't read French. I should be able to, but I can't. It's right up here. I don't even know where I'm looking. Anyway, John Hooper from 1927 to 2006. My hope is that people will be involved and interested in the sculpture and get to know these wooden people as well as I do. And there you can see he's actually putting the lettering on the newspaper that we just take or take a look at. Just took a look at. How about that? People fascinated John Hooper. He received the Order of Canada for creating public sculptures that celebrate the extraordinary in ordinary people, such as his Terry Fox bronze near Parliament Hill in Ottawa. People Waiting, carved from Philippine Mahogany, was commissioned by Canada Post in 1975 as part of a federal program dedicating 1% of public building costs to art. The humor of these larger-than-life figures breaks down barriers to art and invites viewers to interact and become part of the sculpture. And as you can see, there are some benches over there people like to sit on. We have people in from out of town. They like to get photos with the statues and pose with them. Nice little feature we have here in Uptown St. John, but I do not think this is all that John Hooper has carved. There are some more people statues elsewhere over near the uh, Market Square Mall. We're going to go take a look at those right now. So we're now here at another one of the stops with the statues. The People Statue, as this one is just called. Any more information on that? Nope. Now, we're going to get our items, of course. Let's see what the People Statue gives me. I'm looking for some more potions, because if we take a look at the City Market, we've already lost it to Team Valor, and all they have in there is a muck. All right, no big deal. I could take that back if I want, but I've got my coins. We are good for the day. But now let's take a closer look at the People statue. As you can see here, it is done by John Hooper, 1984, and Jack Massey. Because the similar art style you can see on the characters here, similar faces. And what I want to do is take a look at up here, because, let me see if I can zoom in. It looks like it might be a sundial. Now, there's no information I could see, no plaque or no information, but they got like 2839. So it looks like it's basically forming the function of a sundial. What kind of scares me though is, well, this doesn't scare me. You can see like a hand symbol up here. We see it's like nighttime, or what is that? What is that red thing? I don't know. But if we come around the other side of the statue, we see a bunch of different symbols. What exactly? is this symbol for? Why is this here? It's so freaky looking, but I like this. This is really good. I like seeing art. Like, I don't really get out and do enough, you know, examining of art and stuff. There's a museum right here in Market Square. I've gone in there a few times, and maybe I just don't stop and appreciate it enough, you know? That's what I like about Pokemon Go, is it gets you to go to these places, and I don't know how many times I've passed by the statue here, got my items, and went on my way. I didn't really pay attention to that creepy face up there like you know there's so many cool things here and just open your eyes as you're walking around doing Pokemon Go hit a Poke Stop look at what that stop is and learn more about it I said this back when I was doing my tour of the loyalist information here in St. John it's just cool to see so much history and so much culture that Pokemon Go gets you out checking out so as I say if you have a chance open your eyes to the world around you as you go and just check out what the world has to offer and what was I just saying about opening your eyes to the world around you? I'm coming down here to pretty interesting little dock area here in, or near the boardwalk of Market Square. 
and for the first time I've just now noticed this plaque. I never knew this was here. I usually come down here at nighttime. These are the Trafalgar Stairs. I guess that's what these are right here. Now the Trafalgar Stairs, Market Slip was the landing site of the rowboat and scow ferry service from the west side, where I live, of the harbor to the city until 1838. The stairs of this wharf were named Trafalgar to commemorate the famous naval victory of Admiral Horatio Nelson over the Allied French and Spanish fleets under Admiral Pierre de Villeneuve at the Battle of Trafalgar, October 21st, 1805. So there's a lot of history, like just, it's cool to see all these different things you might not otherwise know. And the reason I came down here, there was a gas leak. There it is, all right. These have been popping up in this area. Well, not these, but you know, Pokemon have been popping up in this area. Now that I know that this dock area exists, I wanna come down here to make these captures because it's kind of a nice view across the harbor. Can you see my house from here? I don't think so. I think it's blocked behind that big, can I zoom in on it here? That big shed thing in the distance. I think I'm on the other side of that. Anyhow, let's grab this gas lead. More stardust, more candy. Might have enough to evolve one of these during the... Gonna have a hard time throwing this, ain't I? Well, at least we got the hit. Can we make the capture, though, is the thing. But I could have enough candy to evolve a Ghastly into a Haunter during tonight's massive evolution spree as we do make the catch of Ghastly. Let's check the appraisal and see, is it worth keeping, perhaps? Room for improvement. I guess not. And we have 34, so we're going to hang on to that Ghastly possible evolution later on tonight as I scare some pigeons away. And on we go. And as the rain starts to drizzle down, looks like we have the first of the eggs hatching right here. Volume is good, all right. Out of the five kilometer, we find a drowsy. Nothing too crazy, nothing too amazing, but we got 1,600 stardust for that. Now, if I'm correct, we're gonna see the 10 kilometer. This is my last free incubator I got for level 30. Do we see something amazing? Come on, Dratini. I'm actually not upset about that. I haven't hashed a Gligar yet. I've only found three, I believe. I finally have another one. Let's check the appraisal on this. Battle with the best of them. Max attack. That's not bad. A little small for its kind, but max attack. Very cool stuff. So I believe that does kind of max us out at 300 Pokemon. So I'm going to spend some time recharging the phone and sending some of these extra Pokemon away. And then I have one more thing I want to do before I leave the Uptown area for the afternoon. But then we'll come back later on tonight and see if we can get, well, not see if we can do a bunch of evolutions for all new species of Pokemon. It's going to be a massive evolution fest to end off this episode. Well, I'm recharged for a little bit. It is now kind of raining out, so it's not the best weather, but I'm okay. It's not a big, heavy rain, so we'll be okay for a little bit. Hey, a Magikarp. Is it shiny? No, it is not. I'm going to leave it for the time being. One last thing I want to accomplish before ending off the adventures here in the Uptown area. I'm heading to a poke stop here on our boardwalk connecting to what's known as Harbor Passage, a walking path from one side of the city to the other. On occasion, we've been lucky enough to have Dratini show up right around here. And if I check my items, you will see I still have a couple lures remaining from when I hit level 30. So I'm going to drop a lure. I'm going to wander back and forth a little bit between this stop and the other two nearby ones just to restock on some items. And if possible, I want to see if I can get enough candy to evolve into a Dragonite for this episode as well. Kind of a slim chance, but we will try our best. So let's pop up here, drop ourselves a lure in the Harbor Passage Uptown Entrance Stone Plaque. Quite a big title with no description whatsoever. How do you do the item or the allure? The white spot? There we go. Okay, lure module is in. What is our first encounter? Does it show up immediately? I don't know. Hey, my name's on there, sweet. All right, so we're just gonna catch everything that we see, basically for Stardust, and I'll wander back and forth. If anything amazing does pop up, though, I'll come back and show you. After I make this polywag capture, we're gonna wander on and have a breakout, of course, but we've got plenty of berries. We've got lots of, I got like over 50 pen, or the uh, nano berries. I never use those unless I really need to empty a space in my inventory. Do we get it this time? It just wanted a berry. All right, fair enough. I had plenty of those. So Poliwag added, I am still kind of not maxed out, but I've got a lot of Pokemon in the uh, storage right now. Eventually, I'll be doing a bunch of evolving later on, of course. Oh, Sneasel just showed up. It's a female. I already have a male Sneasel named after my... You see that thing just bounced that one? Wow, that was a good shot. Anyway, 
I already have a male Sneasel, which I'm powering up. Or I don't think he's powered up right now, but he will be the one that I'm powering up. Can we get some more Stardust? Yes, we can! Which is kind of weird, because those things have been hard for me to catch before. Other than that deflect? That was the first ball. I'll take that. What's your stats like? Room for improvement. Oh, of course. All right, but as I say, I'll wander around a little bit and check back in if anything else rare does pop up. Well, as you can see, the lure has burnt out. Nothing super amazing came up. I mean, for the area, it was kind of interesting. We saw a bell sprout. Of course, there's a Sneasel. Nidoran female showed up. And what else was there? I can't remember. There's something else that normally doesn't show up down there, but for the area, it was unique. No Dratini, so kind of a waste of a lure, at least for what I was going for. But fortunately, all this walking back and forth has brought our egg closer to hatching, our two kilometer egg. Also, Evie is that much sooner to getting that 10 kilometers total walk. We're only 0.8 away, which means when I do my walk around evolution later tonight, I should be able to get two possible chances for an Umbreon. Here's hoping for the best. So what we're gonna do for the time being, I'm just gonna grab myself these items once again. I have fortunately gotten all of my team healed up. Don't need to heal any potions for the time being. Anything, oh, there's a gold, I just walked past there. Anyways, let's grab our items here. If we see anything super amazing for the items, I'll take a super potion. And just a polywag down that way. So that's gonna be a wrap for the time being for us for you folks. Just a few moments, you're gonna see the evening session of Massive Evolution. For me, I gotta go home, recharge the batteries, recharge myself, and finish working on some more videos. But after all that, I will be back with some evolutions. Well, as you can see, it is now nighttime here in the Uptown St. John area, which means the time has come to begin evolution in just a moment. I am just 0.3 kilometers away from Evie, having all 10 kilometers walked. So as soon as we hit that 10 kilometers, I'm going to drop out a lucky egg and start evolving all sorts of species up. The moment you all been waiting for is moments away. So actually, we just went 0.2 kilometers right there. I wonder if it's safe to do it now. I can wait and evolve the Eevees up later. Also, the thing is, you might need to have the Eevee assigned as your current buddy to evolve into one of the Espeon or Umbreon species. So I'll probably wait and do that. I'm going to do a little bit more walking, just make sure we hit that 10 kilometers, and then I'll pop back in as we start the evolution spree. All right, the time is now. Eevee has just gotten its next candy. Got 10 kilometers going. Let's open up these items. Hopefully the wind's not too bad here, but if so, hopefully the audio recorder will be able to deal with that. Lucky egg is used. All right, so quickly, let's start the evolution spree. Let's get Eevee evolved up randomly into something. Let's see what we're gonna get. Make sure my volume is turned up so we can hear this on camera or on audio if possible. Come on, show me Umbreon, show me Umbreon. I got the Umbreon, everybody. Nice, I haven't gotten Umbreon yet. As you can see, adding to the Pokedex right now. So that is true, you don't need the nickname to be able to get an Umbreon. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is switch over to the other Eevee and see if we can get another Umbreon. Where are you at? Where is Eevee in the Pokedex? Right here. So another one is favorited right here. We're gonna see if making it the buddy at least not maybe guarantees evolution, but uh, gives you a better chance of it. Let's go Eevee, come on. Do we see another Umbreon? More CP possibilities perhaps? So what I'm doing right now, I'm walking around as I'm evolving everything because I figure, why not do it while on the go? Because if I hit a Poke Stop, I can get boosted experience for that too. Another Umbreon. Now I wonder, does it guarantee evolution into Espeon or Umbreon if they have 10 kilometers and are your buddy? That could be a thing. So anyway, I'm excited. I'll get more evolutions. Oh wait, there's a Magikarp. I might as well catch this Magikarp for boosted experience. What if? What if it's a shiny Magikarp? Probably not. But let's see, it's flopping right on the deck. No, standard Magikarp. Let's get extra experience for a curveball, a great throw, and a first catch. First Pokeball thrown. Yes, there we go. Double all that experience. We're going to get a whopping 420. What are your stats like, Magikarp? Pretty decent stuff. All right, so now there's more Pokemon to catch, but I need to evolve. Let's go to my favorites. Who is first? to evolve up. We've got, hmm, Claw Grip. All right, this Scyther, check the appraisal, it can battle with the best of them. Best quality is HP, attack is great, defense is great, they're all maxed out. We've got like seven metal coats in the bag. We've got 50 Scyther candies. We're getting a Scizor, max stat Scizor, everybody. Now, what was it, 14 something for the CP? 
out. Let's see what goes up to. And I didn't think to check the attacks. I'm gonna try to get away from the wind here. There we are, another Gen 2 Pokemon added to the Pokedex, put into the team. Let's check out what this Pokemon has to work with. 1600 with Fury Cutter and X Scissor. I think that's what it had, actually. No, it had Aerial Ace for the charge move. All right, so that is Claw Grip. Next in line for evolution, where are we at here? Oh, Sol, I'd love to evolve into Weavile, but Gen 4 is a little ways away. We're not gonna evolve Russo up into Blossom. And again, I didn't check the CP. I gotta remember to do that so I can see comparisons. But we're gonna get another Gen 2 item evolved Pokemon. We're getting a lot of item evolution Pokemon in this one. There's my first Bellossom, everybody. Say hi to Russo. Add it to the Pokedex. Much more experience being given. And we see at 1649, Razor Leaf and Dazzling Gleam. All right, not bad. Who needs the next evolution? Where are we looking at? Hope I don't miss anybody. Now, Slayer, oh, we're so close. We just couldn't find Dragonair or a Dratini for more candies. We'll get you there someday, though. So next in line, I'm going to keep Puckers as she is. She's a Max IV Smoochum. I already have a Jinx as it is. But Pepper, the Snubble, can now evolve up. Now, I just said earlier, I can do walking around. I can get Poke Stops. Clearly, I'm not doing that. But once I'm done evolving all these new species, I've got a bunch of Caterpie, a bunch of Weedle, a bunch of Pidgey. I'll be evolving them off camera, hitting some Poke Stops along the way. I'm not going to film that because that's kind of boring stuff, right? But I want to see all these new species and get them all captured on footage. So, Grand Bull added, 1517 with Snarl and Close Combat. No stab moves, but I guess that's okay. All right, here's the one I've been waiting for. 665, Rocky the Sandshrew. I've never caught a wild Sandshrew. I've hatched them all. Pretty sure he has max attack stat, too, max IVs for uh, attack. And immediately, just by evol just, sorry, just by hatching a bunch of these guys, I have enough candy to get Sand Slash. So my Gen 1 original Kanto team of Shelbert, Pikachu, Squeak, Chirp, Critter, and Rocky is now complete in Pokemon Go. It only took just under a year, I believe, up to 1307 with Mudshot and Bulldoze, two stab attacks. All right, who is next? Can't get Machoke evolved just yet, unfortunately. Colorado can't evolve up just yet. Tails can. Our Vulpix is going to evolve into nine tails. By the way, is me walking with uh, the camera moving around distracting anybody back there or out there, or is it okay? Hopefully it's okay. You can kind of focus on the game screen anyway as we get our beautiful nine tails and something just appeared. So we might take a little break from all these evolutions and see which Pokemon just popped up. Maybe it's a Dratini. So we have Troll 13 for CP, Fiend Attack and Overheat, very powerful fire type stab attack. Just a Poliwag. But from those evolutions alone, we're at 10,420 experience added. Let's continue with this massive evolution fest. I love this. All right, so we just got Tails evolved up. Next in line, who is ready to roll? Uh, Fluffy, our Clefairy, we did finally get enough candy. I believe Clefairy are now nesting in the Loyalist Burial Grounds. I've seen a lot of those there lately. So we're going to be able to get Clefable and the Dragon Slayer of Gen 2 in the uh, Johto Elite Four, if you watch the playthrough of uh, Pokemon Silver. She is now here in Go as well. Let's see what CP she goes up to. I haven't seen too many Clefable in the game. She's up to only 755. We've got to power her up, of course. Charge Beam and Moonblast. If only Charge Beam could power up your special attack in this as well. So, since we're into the Gen 2 era, we've got Vinny the Chikorita at 279 CP. I have enough candy, thanks to the previous nest in King Square of Chikorita, to evolve all the way to Meganium right here and now. Of course, don't have a rare candy like in TCG, so we've got to go into Bayleaf first. So, from what was it, 275, we now have Vinny the Bayleaf, who goes to a whopping. 459. But from 459, we're going right immediately up into Meganium. This is like in the anime when Ash's Charmander evolved to Charmeleon, and like what, two episodes later became Charizard. I always thought that was a very fast evolution, but I guess I can't complain because I just went through that myself here with good old Vinny. Max evolution. All right, from four or six or whatever I said, we go up to 797. Vine Whip and Solar Beam for the moves. Very powerful Solar Beam. And 
Spritz is next. Spritz is, of course, my female war turtle that you see in the background of a lot of my videos when I'm in the laboratory, aka the house, recording some of the playthroughs and such. Finally, I caught my fifth female uh, Squirtle in Pokemon Go. Now we're getting the evolution. So Spritz, the actual war turtle, has taken her place on the team. Very cool, very nice. I'm loving all these evolutions. She has Water Gun and Aqua Jet up to 510. Next, Kabuto. With all those uh, Kabuto that we found in the King Square, even when I forgot to record, because I am just professional like that, we're getting our second evolved fossil Pokemon of the Kanto region. Kabutops joins the team. And again, didn't look at the CP, but I think it was at 200 something. But now with evolution, we'll see his CP goes up considerably, up to 599. With Rock Smash and Stone Edge, powerful rock type hit. Is there anyone else ready to evolve up? Oh, P-Hat. P-Hat can evolve into Jump Off. Do you guys like these evolutions? Do you think maybe I should cut back on some of these? Is it too long? Or do you love seeing these live happening as they do? Because I know I love experiencing them. And I figure this, like these videos, since I don't always cover big events, I'm just covering my day-to-day -day adventures, I figure that's what I gotta put in these videos. You know, you guys get to check this out. So, Jump Off added to the Pokedex with Bullet Seed and Energy Ball. And we can also evolve Sundance, thanks to the recent grass-type event that only lasted for a weekend, maybe a weekend and a couple extra days. But I found a bunch of sun current in the area. The event is now over. I didn't record anything there because it was just such a short event. I didn't figure there's going to be much time to get anything seriously big recorded for it. But at least I see an evolution result of that grass-type event right now. Sunflora. So Sundance has evolved up as well. Now, anything else? I could evolve Shiny Magikarp, but I do want to wait until I find a second one so I can choose which one is the better of the two, if I can find a second one, and evolve that one into the Red Gyarados. But I guess that's going to be it for the time being. Tentacool appeared over here. I'm going to get 13,000 experience for that. Now, for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to wander around, see if I can evolve a bunch more species up, get as much experience as possible, hitting some Pokestops, and when all that's said and done, I'll come back and show you what level or what, you know, what level I'm at, or at least how close to level 32 I have gotten. Well, the lucky egg has already burned out, but uh, I haven't even gotten through half the Pokedex in Gen 1 yet, I don't think. I'm down to uh, Venonat evolving up right now. So I'm still going to continue evolving all these Pokemon just to gain as much experience as possible. So once this is all complete and all the evolutions are done, and probably at that point my bus will be showing up pretty soon, I'll come back and show you the final results of how high, how close I've gotten to level 32 with all this massive evolution. Now we see a new Venomoth added to the collection, most likely going to be sent away for candy. Alright, we are back. The evolutions are complete and man did it ever take forever. Look, the sun is out, it's shining brightly. Of course, obviously, this is now the next day, because as it turned out, by the time I was done evolving Pokemon, well, I'll show you a screenshot right here. The last one was about an hour after I began evolving the first Pokemon. And, yeah, it was kind of dark out at that point of the night, plus I had, like, maybe a minute to get to my bus to get home, so I thought I could do a recap at the end of the day and show you the, uh, I didn't quite hit level 32, because I could have used a second lucky egg, because it did take about an hour to evolve everything up, but I figured I'm going to save that last lucky egg, the last free one I got for level 30, for the next time I get a whole bunch more Pokemon saved up. And I'll mention a little bit more about that in a little bit. But I got kind of close, I guess. I'm only, <laughs> only about under 13, sorry, 130,000 points away from hitting level 32. Anyways, one of the reasons I wanted to wait until now, another reason, because of course, dark last night, is because I realized as I was on my way to the bus stop, I said at one point I was going to tell you guys about this fiddlehead statue. And the plaque was currently, or when I first talked about it, it was blocked off by the uh, snow during the winter season. But we're going to take a look at this fiddlehead right now and see what it's all about. So it's the granite fiddlehead created by James W. Boyd, unveiled in November of 2002. So I'm going to go over here and we'll check out the plaque and read what this has to say. Not sure if this is going to show up on camera, but I'll read it out for you there. Let me just get down and read it properly. This sculpture created in granite by James W. Boyd of St. John was commissioned as a project of the Deep Sea, S-E-E, -E, Visual Arts Fest 2001 to generate awareness of art in public places. The artist chose the fiddlehead as an important symbol of New Brunswick. In a similar manner, the adjacent building is a reflection of the history and heritage of the community, having served as a free public library from 1904 to 1983 and subsequently as an arts and science exhibition center. This was unveiled November 2002. And it's talking about 
the St. John Art Center right here, as you can see. So that is what that fiddlehead is all about. Again, like I say, it's kind of cool. Get out, learn things about your history, your local area, and just arts and stuff in general. Let's see what items we get for our first stop of the day here. Not too bad. Some potions, some berries, some items, or some Pokeballs, I should say. I'm currently at 351 out of my 400 max item capacity. And how are we doing on Pokemon? So I did do a bunch of transferring of the extra species that I evolved up. I'm down to 187, so I've got a good hundred and some Pokemon left to catch to uh, max out once again. I'm going to change things up a little bit though, because what I've been doing is, as soon as I have enough candy to power something up that needs Stardust between 1000 and 2000, I'll start to power them up. I've been running into a situation though, where basically I'm running out of candy to power things up, and I have to start walking them. So what I'm going to do from now on, I'm going to wait until I have, let's say, for example, 100 candy of a Pokemon, anything in excess of 100 that I can use for evolution, I'll do that. But I want to make sure I keep a nice amount of candy for each species so that I can even start power them up when they show up. Because the higher we get, the more their power up requirements are going to need. For instance, let's take a look at, oh, I don't know, Rockset is pretty powerful. I need three Rhyhorn, or yeah, Rhyhorn candies every time to power this guy up. And it takes quite a bit to walk him to get one candy. So just for my own personal playthrough of the game, I'm going to wait till I have 100 of each candy. And then, as I say, anything in excess, we will start powering those up. Which means as soon as we're done walking, good old Stockster, I have chosen one of the two Umbreon to be a main team member. He needs 0.9 kilometers more. I'm going to let him finish that up, get that final candy. At this point, I'm going to start walking another Pokemon, which I mentioned earlier. Where is she at? She's down kind of low for the time being. Slayer. We just need 10 more candies to evolve into our first Dragonite of Pokemon Go. And that's going to be one of my main goals right there. So, that being the case, I have shown you the Fiddlehead statue. I have at least completed that part of my mission. So the last thing I wanted to show off in this video is I want to show off a lot of these new Pokemon that I have evolved up. We're going to try to take down the City Market Gym once again because it has been claimed from us since yesterday. So we got a Machamp, we do have a Blissey, so I want to showcase what our close combat could do to this thing. And a Dragonite, and a Gyarados, and a Gyarados, and a Gyarados, and a Gyarados. I love when they have double weak Pokemon like that just kind of bundled up because I can plow through those a lot of electric type Pokemon. Alright, so, whoops, I don't want to leave the gym, I want to go in there. So let's take a look at some of our new species. I guess for the Machamp, we'll go with Russo, because we do have Dazzling Gleam as the charged attack. I'm going to bring Claw Grip as well. It is our Max IV Scizor. And to deal with the Blissey, we're going to take the Grand Bolt Pepper with close combat in here. Uh, let's go, let's bring Rocky. It's been forever since I've gotten to have the final Kanto main team member in Pokemon Go. We're bringing him for our first battle. We are going to bring also... Let's go with Sundance, another new species. And to wrap things up, I think I got with the Pokemon that I'm currently walking. It's going to be Stockster, our Umbreon. Let's get this battle underway and see, can we reclaim the gym? Now, we probably can't do it in one go. I'm not going to show off too much of the battling. I'm just going to show you one attempt at this gym because I don't want to fit it any longer than it currently is. There's a lot of evolutions going on, so we'll speed through it. But let's see here. We can dodge these basic attacks. We have Dazzling Gleam. See how much damage we can get off with this. Not bad. Oh, dynamic punch coming in. Come on. It said dodge. Show. There we go. See, that's what I don't like about the gym. It's like glitchy. I don't know if it has to like transmit data to the server to say if I dodged or not, but it's like a lot of the times I take extra damage than I should be taking. Oh, there. The dodge actually worked. So I don't know what's going on. Anyway, another dynamic punch note. All right. We can take the Machamp down. Dazzling Gleam. Whew. One down. Now it's for the Blissey. I'm immediately going to switch into good old Pepper. See if we can Pepper this thing with some close combats. So I think with Dark Pulse, no, Snarl is our basic attack. We're going to let that thing hit us, of course, get our charge attack much quicker. There we are. Close combat does a whopping hardly anything. Of course, we are kind of low level compared to this Blissey as it is. And here comes a Hyper Beam. We're going to dodge this one. And apparently we didn't, although we did, which is weird. Anyhow, we're just going to stay in, because this is what I say about the, the gym, it's like glitchy. If they could somehow fix this, this would make it a lot more fun to do gym battles, but I don't know. You just got to work with what you have for the time being. I want my coins. So it doesn't look like I can take this thing down as well as I was expecting to with Pepper in the close combat. So when it does come time to take on this Blissey, I'll be using my usual routine of good old uh, Rock Spin and Rock Steady. 
because they've proven themselves effective in the past against this exact particular Blissey as well. So look at this. Look how little damage we're doing. Since we're not going to win, I'm just going to show off all the Pokemon I possibly can. Let's get Rocky the Sand Slash in here. Some pretty quick basic attacks. And let's just let... Uh, no, you know what? Let's show off the Bulldoze. I want to show off each of the attacks. we still got 25 seconds. Hyper Beam, dodge that Rocky. Come on, bud. Yep, all right, let's go into Stockster, I guess. Running out of time, I can't show all the attacks off. So I forget what you have, Faint Attack, I think, and your charge hit is Foul Play, I believe. All right, I didn't really get to see the animation. Again, that's another thing about the glitchiness. The animations don't always show. We're going to fire off a Bullet Seed, and that's going to be it. So we did lower it by a 1,000 at least. We took the Machamp down, and we're going to just call it a day for the time being. I'm just going to switch hands here because the uh, one arm gets tired holding the phone for quite a while but anyways that's gonna be a wrap for today's pokemon go video if you enjoyed the video of course feel free to drop a like down below and just leave a comment letting me know the things that are going on in your pokemon go adventures and what you'd like to see me do in the future i'm not sure the next event is going to be in game but i think probably the next time i record a video will be for the event whatever it happens to be like the grass event that just went by but it was only for a few days so i didn't really get anything recorded for that but there's always going to be more events coming up i am sure if you want to see some more Pokemon videos that I have done here on the channel, there will be some links during the outro to some of those videos, as well as a link to subscribe to the channel for some daily Pokemon content, such as the occasional Pokemon Go video, we got Pokemon Yellow Randomized Nuzlocke on the go, Pokemon TCG Online videos as well, lots of cool Pokemon content, various different subjects and various, uh, I guess, yeah, subjects, various topics. Anyway, with all that being said, I want to say thanks for watching today's Pokemon Go video. Professor Chaz is now signing off, and as always, I'll catch you next time.